my dear friend. Oh, by the way, thank you, Maria, for your wonderful introduction. So my topic today is oh, <laughs> Juno, my boy. My topic today is orthodontic learning journey. And I was so lucky that I have a very happy learning journey. So I would love to share with you. I hope you can get some idea to help you in your journey of orthodontic learning. First, I would love to show you my educational background. <laughs> I was lucky to learn from the father of biomechanic in orthodontic, Charlie Burston, and later on, Jim Roberts. They both are wonderful professor and excellent mentor. So I learned my biomechanic from this two John. And this is Dr. Burston's bus that I make to remember this great mentor. The story start 33 years ago when Charlie Burston gave his first course in Taiwan. And guess what? I was just turned 27 years old. Young man, like you, just graduated from orthodontic program. So I was uh, fascinated after his lecture. And I was thinking about, I had found my mom average that I wanted to cry for the rest of my life. In other words, I was thinking, when I grow up, I want to be someone like him. He is my hero. And he is the one I would love to learn from. 27 years old, so lucky to find your role model. My role model at that time, and as always, I study, study Burston. This is Charlie Burston, baby Charlie Burston. And Charlie Burston and his father, his father also a dentist in St. Louis. And Charlie Burston and his uh, female student. In 2011, Charlie Burston invited me to be the keynote speaker in Burston Symposium. And after the symposium, Charlie Burston, <laughs> Charlie Burston invite, asked me about some question. So we have a very happy chat after the lecture. And finally, when I explained to him my answer to his question, he punched the table and said, I agree. This is a better way to treat this patient. Do you know it's a big for a young man like me to hear this statement from Charlie Burston? Because usually when Charlie Burston asks questions, people are so scared. So after that conversation, my friend, Dr. Pa from Korea told me, hey, Chris, Everybody was standing. You are the only one sitting there. And it is a, for me, it is so natural to talk with Charlie Burston because I, I knew Charlie Burston for over 30 years. This is Charlie Burston again. <laughs> so my also don't take journey that a couple months ago, I read this article published in AJODO April 2021. Talk about his also don't your learning curve. And I when I read through this article, I was so moved because the curve 
look so similar to my learning journey. That's why today I would love to share this also the learning journey with you. I hope that will help you for the rest of your learning journey. So when we start also don't practice after also don't get training. This life represents confidence. So when I get out of school, my confidence level was so high. And I believe I can solve every single also don't get case. Don't require any advice. And then after a couple of years, maybe three or four years, it depends on different people. And we start to see some complication. Many complications can happen. And then we kind of beat up. And then the confidence level drop to the bottom. And after that, you were thinking about, oh, I cannot possibly prepare myself for every orthodontic complication or relax. And from this point on, people start to thinking about maybe I need more education. So they start to learn from this professor, that mentor, this guy, that guy. So like you will take a course to learn from this speaker, that speaker. And then you start to realize how to solve different cases and your confidence level start to picking up, picking up. And finally, you will find I am improving my orthodontic awesome skill and learning as much as I can. So in other words, this curve, the downturn curve, which is you counter complication. And then you find that continuous education is so important for everybody because also don't it is very complicated. There are so many difficult cases that you do need to take call to learn from other people. So let me prop my also don't it, learning journey. It's like this. When I graduate, the first 10 years, I learned also don't it. Oh, by the way, I spent five years in Taiwan learning also don't it? And after that, I spent the other five years. So at the end of my also don't it education, it already took me 10 years. My confidence was so high, over 80%. And I saw I can fix every case. And after I open my practice, I start to find out there are so many complications, relapse and difficult cases. I couldn't find it. And then my confidence level dropped to the bottom. So I start to learn from other people, take a course, learn from different speakers, and gradually after the other 10 years, and my skill get higher and higher. So first, I thought I can solve every orthodontic case, don't require any advice. Then so many complications come along and I couldn't not, I didn't know how to solve. So that's the bottom. And now we start to pick it up and then we improve our skill with the continuing education. It, it happened to me, and I will assume it will happen to each and every one of you in this room. Because a lot of people share the same learning curve like this. Please, when you see this camera, take a photo. So you will remember this pattern. That might happen to you after 10 years after 20 years, after 30 years. So what kind of complication we talk about? Well, the first one happened to be TMJ. When we were graduate students, we were thinking about that would not happen to me. 
we are straightening the teeth. Why should we spend so much time to learn TMJ? And after you practice maybe a couple of years, you start to find out this case is TMJ, that case is TMJ. I have no idea how to fix it. And what kind of TMJ problem we talk about? Number one, T jaw, TM John resorption, especially for young female about 20 years old. Number two, you start to see overjet increase because once people has resolved join and the mandible will drop and the overjet will get bigger and bigger at the end of your your treatment the the overjet is ideal and uh, and after three or four years it got bigger and bigger so if you have that kind of problem you might want to think about maybe the patient has join problem for example Five years after orthodontic treatment by the other orthodontic, and she started to realize the open bite and the overjet. And when you look at this x ray, you will find the, the condyle head, she, the shape of the condyle head is quite different. They are quite different. One side was well off like this. Did you see that? The other side is okay. This side is not okay. So that's the resorption of condyle head. And if you take a sagittal beam, you probably will realize the resorption surface. Very severe. Slice beam also indicate that the condyle surface has severe resorption. For in this case, once you have the counter head resorption, you start to see the open bar. You start to see the big object. You start to see the midnight oil. And those are pretty good indicator to show you, you might want to look at the counter head a little bit carefully. For me, if I have a case like this, and I, I probably would suggest you don't treat this case. Just refer to somebody who has more experience. Refer, probably the best policy. If somebody else already treated this case, couldn't figure that out, it will be better for you to refer that case. But unfortunately, I have no choice in my city. When people find out the complication, they want to refer to Chris, me, because they want to make me suffer. <laughs> That's a joke. So what you need to think about is, what was the occlusal relationship found to be related to the TMJ? In other words, if patient has TMJ, what kind of occlusal situation will possibly happen? And that is very important knowledge for you to learn. Because when you look at occlusion, you know that something wrong, that something might relate to TNJ. So in other words, how come were this condition reported? When I study the literature, I found 84 studies reporting this finding. And if you look at the percentage, which, which, was, which was very, very important, that 16 study has talked about anterior open mind, which consists 20%. <clears throat> and we have 13 study report increased over gen which was 70%. You put them together. Until open by and, all, and increase over jet consists 37%. What kind of information you got from here? You know, if the patient has until open by and have the big over jet, you 
you probably need to think about TMD. So you look at the TMD a little bit carefully. You might find a, a lot of interesting findings. So ever since those complications happened to me in my practice, my diagnosis routine changed dramatically. Used to be, I would look at number one, the facial aesthetic, which is the profile, pin aesthetic, quiet aesthetic. And then number two, I would look at the functional occlusion, alignment, occlude dentition. And number three, I would look at the anterior guidance, the inclination of upper incisor, and the overjet and overbound. Those are very important. And finally, with those painful experience from those TMD patients, I know important. Look at every single patient. I will look at this form. The TMJ, the form of the joint, the CO and CR discrepancy. Central occlusion, central relation, different. Those are very important knowledge. When you diagnose your case, do not just look at the dentition. Ah, is it class one, two, three? No, no, that is not enough. You need to look at the functional occlusion, look at the anterior guidance, look at the TMJ. The second problem, the first one is TMJ. The second one happened to be non-extraction versus extraction. When I started my practice, I was trying to be heroic to treat case most of the case, non-extrition, because the patient wanted another extrition. And later on, I find out, I get some with that. And so I gradually realized how to decide which one need to extract, which one you can do non-extrition. So extrition versus non-extrition is a big issue. For example, 2006, when I just pick up the daemon braces and I get information that with daemon, you can treat a lot of cases with non attrition which is a good news. So in this case, this case come along 2006 and I, I just start my daemon braces about three years. So I was thinking about, oh, okay, if the patient didn't want to take the teeth out, I'm going to use non extraction So I put the braces on, have open coil spring two months, three months. Guess what? Did you see the problem? Three months in treatment, the open bite get worse and the incisor get flare up. Of course, you want to create a space. For Asian profile, the Asian patient, my country, they don't want to protrusive because our nose is very small. So if you have protrusive lip, they don't like it. They want to lip flat so the nose can be more prominent. So if you look at the ELA, you draw the ELA from the tip of nose to chin, the low lip oh, way up to this Eli, that's because the low incisor get frayed up. Because you wanna you wanna lie up the crowded low incisor. And how can it how can they get the space? They fray up eventually. So three months in treatment, I was thinking about maybe extraction is the way to go. But uh, I told the patient, oh, go back and come, come back next month and we will take the other breaker and see what happened. One month later, it didn't improve. So four months in treatment, get more protrusive, more frail. So 
I was thinking about, yeah, that's the nature because when you want to fray out, they will, when we want to align the teeth, they will fray out. So one thing you can do to bring that back in order to improve the deep profile, extraction is the way to go. Otherwise, how can you bring the, the fraying inside the back? It's difficult. So I find the, the secret uh, formula, if you have open mind, high angle, crowding, equal to extraction for Asian profile. Asian profile, we have protrusion. Very important, secret formula. I would love you to take a photo. Next time, if you are open mind, high angle, severe crowding, I think extraction is uh, reasonable. How would Damon, Dr. Damon do with the same case? Let's go back to Dwight Damon's workbook. He has a similar case like this. He tried to create a space for this uh, block out canine. And guess what? End up with severe open bite and flaring upper and lower incisor. So eventually, Dwight Damon, Dr. Damon, take out the premolar and then it become good profile, good occlusion, and good stability. So even Dwight Damon will take out the four bar. If you have high angle, open bite, severe crowd. I think, I think extraction, extraction is a better, better way, way to solve, solve this problem. The conclusion. The man who makes no mistake usually makes nothing. So I decided to take four by out. It is very painful decision to make because you just promised the patient and I can do non extraction four months ago. And now you have to take four by out, if you take four by out, you have the extraction space. So that were the least resistant area. So, so the canine will trip into this extraction space and it is so easy to light up the case. And the rest of the story is easy and we done. And look at the profile. And the best way to evaluate your case is through this symptomatic analysis. A lot of young people, young doctors, they don't do symptomatic analysis. For me, I think it's, uh, I prefer to do this symptomatic analysis. So you will learn a lot from your case, especially those uh, mistake case, you will learn a lot. Look at that huge change. After four by attraction, we be able to get a space to retract the low incisor. That's why the protrusive lip has been improved a lot. Without four by attraction, it could be very difficult to solve this protrusive lip in this particular case. So at that time, I get an idea. Maybe it is beneficial for me and for my friend that I can organize a decision making table. Dr. Chang, can you speak more loud or be more closer to the computer? Because I, I try to listen to you, but the sound is not so big. Yeah. I have, I have Justin. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah that's yes. better? Yes, that's better if you can be closer to the computer. Sorry for that. Thank you. Good. So, this is a key point. We got the volume up. How to make the decision whether you want to take the teeth out or not. And I come up with this decision making table in 2006. And this table become 
the core of my thought process. And let me walk through for you. Number one, I look at the profile. If protrusive, I think about equation. Straight, think about non-equation. High angle, equation. Low angle, think about non-equation. Open by, deep by, flaring, non-flaring, crowding over seven millimeter, decay or missing. If one quarter missing, I will think about take up the other quarter. And patient perception. If the patient say, okay, then we we take out the teeth. If the patient says, oh, no, 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 we don't want to take the tooth out, and I have to stick to the nutrition. Number eight, et cetera. This, these are eight parameters that I diagnose my case. So with this decision-making table, it only took me 30 seconds second to look at the case and write down my diagnosis and treatment plan. Very, very effective way for you for you to make that decision. Iteration or non-iteration. Please take a photo. This table is so important. So important. My core sound process. 10 years later. Six years out of retention, the patient come in, still beautiful occlusion, beautiful profile. Aesthetic and stability. Oh, I love this case. The case I love the most is the case that I suffer. I really suffer from this case. And I learned a lot from this case. And we become very good friends. He referred so many cases to my office. <laughs> so, iteration versus non iteration is important. So, I would again show you Chris Chen, which is my orthodontic learning journey in terms of the time, the timetable. I graduated from Indiana, 1996, which is in the United States. Went back to Taiwan, set up my office. My confidence was high, way right here. And then once I encountered the complication, my confidence level dropped, 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 dropped to the bottom. 2004, I start to learn Damon braces, and I learned a lot when I start this statement braces. And at the same time, I also adopt the mini school. So I kind of put mini school and statement braces together because in Asia, we have so many protrusive that we need to bring the front teeth backward. 2007 was the year, the turning point of my life. I met Dwight Damon. So I'll be able to learn, I was able to learn Damon from Dr. Dwight Damon. So start with my local instructor, Dr. Jong Lin. He is a real pro in class three. Five years learning also in Taiwan. I moved to United States, stay, study. Spend the other five years with Dr. Gene Walker, the biomechanic. And then with the help of Sandra. Sandra used to be the manager of Omco company, introduced me to Dwight Damon. And I was so lucky. I can learn from Dr. Damon when I was still very young. So if you ask me, what is the formula of my practice? My practice was mini school and Damon braces. So this is the first time I met Dr. Dwight Damon in golf course. We love to play golf. And I was so lucky to have a chance to play golf with Dr. Dwight Damon. 
and Dr. Tom Pin. They are very, very good golfer, world class golfer. So the next big event was 2009. I had the privilege to speak in AAO. That was my first AAO, American Association of Orthodontic Annual Meeting, which was the biggest, which is the biggest orthodontic stage in the world. So I was so lucky, so honored to get invited to give a lecture. This is my first AAO. And after my lecture, my moderator, her name was Dr. Naka. I have never met this smart female doctor before. She was my moderator, my chair. And, and she made a conclusion. She told me, you are the best speaker so far. Wow. But uh, it's a hard to trust beautiful young lady, you know. And I, I, I'm not sure she was serious to make this comment. Because when she introduced me, she only spent 21 seconds on me. And for other speaker, she normally will spend two minutes. And she only spent 21 seconds. Can you believe it? Let me show you. He is practicing in private practice in Taiwan currently. His recent interest is applying bone screws to the treatment of for the treatment of impacted teeth. The title of his um, speech today is Orthodontic Bone Screw Application of Unimpacted Teeth. Please welcome Dr. Chang. Thank you, I even don't have a chance to set up my, my remote control. And I, I asked him, why you only spend 21 seconds to introduce me? And her response was, because I never heard about you and couldn't find who is Christian in internet. At that time, she couldn't find it. So I would think about maybe it's important that I have to put my resume in the internet so people can understand who is Christian. So I would love to take this precious opportunity to show you who is Christian. Oh, by the way, after the lecture, I received the response from AAO. I get 98% approval rate, in other words, 98% of the also don't really think my lecture is good. 98%. I was so, so excited. So who is Christian anyway? Christian has three hobbies. Hobby number one, go. Number two, I love to play violin. And number three, I like thinking. So I spend most of my time prayer call, violin, and thinking. That's me. For example, when the ex-CEO from Omco, the CEO from Omco visit Taiwan, the first thing, he, he went to my house and showed me how to pray call. I have an indoor driving range. I practice call inside my house. And this gentleman, the CEO of Omco, showed me how to practice. And I also show my CEO in my bedroom, I have a collection of famous violin. I show CEO from Omco my violin. And, and this is also my painting. So when I sleep, I will look at this golf course because I was thinking about golf all the time. But when I show the violin, the CEO, Patrick, that's his name, was thinking about my painting collection. 
not listen to my violin. And that, that's not good. So next time when you visit my home, I hope you can appreciate my violin, not my painting collection. So that was a uh, 2009. About nine years later, 2018. The AO decided to put me in the last section of last day. And traditional, nobody will show up in the last day because last day is only in the morning, Wednesday morning, uh, or Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday morning, nobody was there. So my friend, Dr. Domingo Martin from Spain, he is very famous. So one month before AAO, I have a lecture with Domingo Martin. And Domingo Martin realized go, I was going to speak in AAO in the last day, in the last session. So Domingo told me nobody will show up in your lecture, in the last session of that day, I'm serious. So in other words, please, you don't have to prepare your lecture because nobody will show up. So I believe you. I asked so many people and they told me, oh, nobody will show up because that's day. So before the AO 2008, I pray golf every day in the United States. Wow, can you believe this is a fine eye? And I hit 182 and I have back spin, which is very, very unusual. This is the first time in my life, 30 year golf journey, that I can hit fine eye with back spin, which is spin back. In other words, it has a moment, backward moment to bring the golf backward, which is very difficult. This was the first time. And we play golf all day before AAO. And that night, my moderator told me her name was Dr. Kim. Uh, hey, Dr. Chen, I will be your moderator tomorrow. And I am afraid that nobody will show up tomorrow because uh, it's the last day. I said, oh, I know. And my room was located in Room C, C room. The seat was 1500. And if nobody showed up, that was an empty in a big room. And guess what? The next day, remember my moderator say, I'm afraid nobody will show up. Domingo Martin say nobody will show up. I'm for sure. And this is a whatever. Did you see the full house? Over 1500 doctors show up in this room. It was completely packed. Wow. Can you imagine it was a full house? My friend couldn't believe. How could this become full house? It's supposed to be nobody will show up. But it was a full house. What can I say? And after the lecture, guess what? Everybody runs through the stage, want to take picture. And it lasts over 30 minutes. Oh, everybody. And this is the vice president of AAO. He was waiting there patiently to thank you for retain so many, keep so many doctors to the last section in the last day. Wow, so many. And look at here. I don't know why this boy is here. I was enjoy take a picture with beautiful female doctor. And this young man come along. Oh, next time, please. Let me enjoy take a picture with female doctor. <laughs> and you might wonder, how about other room? We have a room A, room B, room C. I was in room C. And let's look at room A at the same time. This is a room A, 1,500 seats, only 62 doctors show up. And room B, only 29 doctors show up. Can you believe it? And my room has a full house. And what does that affect you with this full house? 
Well, I think I was thinking about we all have a dream to be able to speak in AO. But what will make people become successful and other people become mediocre speaker? And over the year, I find out this is a quote from J.C. Owen, 1936 Olympic gold winner, four gold. Four gold. Hey, he has this beautiful state by saying we all have dreams. But in order to make dreams come into reality, it takes an over lot of determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort. And that is a beautiful quote. So if you ask me, what is the secret of success? Determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort. And I believe you have those four secrets because you sit in here and listen to the lecture. Listen to other people's mistake and success will help you, help you to succeed in your practice. And you have to be very, very disciplined. How about one year later in AO? 2019 AO, this is what happened. Full house again, couldn't find a seat. Did you see a lot of people was sitting here? And the most interesting story come from Kenji. Kenji, is the world number one aligner speaker, and he brought his son, 11 years old, considered the youngest orthodontic in the world, want to listen to Christian. Couldn't find a chair, so they screamed to the front seat and sit here behind the monitor. And this young man, 11 years old, listened to my lecture, and after that, he made a comment. He told Kenji, Dad, I can understand Chris lecture. Did you know that's big? For 11 years old, can understand your lecture. I think that's big. That means you have explained the situation very clear and very simple. That's why even 11 years old can understand your material. So, after the lecture, that's what happened. This time, the group picture take, took over one hour. One hour. What? A lot of people want to take photo like me. <laughs> and central diver, manager from Hong Kong, make an interesting comment by saying that I have never seen anything like this in my 41 year professional life. Never. Because outside the lecture room, if the hallway was all packed, you cannot squeak in. So many people there. Oh, I was so excited. I took one hour photo. So from 2018 to 2019, my comfort level was get up, 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 up. And that was the compass level I had so far. So that was a big success that year. So you might, you might ask, where is the B? Why people want to listen to your lecture? What is your B? In other words, why would people want to attend your lecture? Why would people want to listen to you? Over the year, I have traveled around the world to give an orthodontic lecture. So today I, I want to share with you my young friend. If you want to share, you want to give a lecture, number one, you need to deliver good content. If the content is not good, 
people are thinking about why would I waste my time? And what is a good content? The content has to be cutting edge. You cannot present the old technique over and over. People get boring. So the content has to be neat, cutting edge, powerful message. Number two, the presentation style has to be engaging. People will pay attention and interesting presentation style is important. Everybody has their own style and it's just enjoy the style and that people can enjoy your presentation. Number three, you need to have the passion to share. If you don't have the passion to share your mistake and success with your friend, the people can realize immediately. So when you give a presentation, you have to have that passion. If you don't have the passion to share, don't give a lecture, please don't do it because people are not going to listen to you. And passion is the one I always have. When I figure out something new, I always want to share with my friend because I, I don't want my friend make the same mistake. That's why I put a lot of lecture in my YouTube channel for free. Over 600 lectures on YouTube channel for free. So you go to the YouTube, you'll be able to study those lectures. Talk about good content. Content. Let me bring here. And people will wonder, what is the cutting edge? Cutting edge. What is the cutting edge? That bring me to look at the history of orthodontics. And let me give you one example about cutting edge. How would you fix a case like this? You couldn't see the low motor. The upper motor was hitting the low gum, the soft tissue. Very severe. Severe Caesar bite. How would you fix it? What would be the cutting edge method to solve this problem? When the patient opened up six millimeter, the right hand side still over there. Wow, that is a big. And she was told only surgery could solve her problem. But she didn't like surgery. Her humble request or uh, no surgery, no extraction. And how would you fix a case like this? Very difficult, very difficult. We published this case report in AJODO three years ago. And the secret to solve the problem is we use mini school, buckle share school, to upgrade the buckle segment and that's how we fix the case. And guess what? We received the case report of the year award, which is the highest clinical award in the world. AJODO decided to give me this award. Oh, I was so like happy, so excited. And, and then the editor, the chief editor, Rob Barron asked me, Chris, can you make a three minute video to show people how you fix this case? That will help people who has a difficulty to read English. Okay, oh, no problem, three minutes, it's easy. So I make this three minute video to show you every single step. So you won't have to download this article to read this article. Ladies and gentlemen, please, Listen carefully. Three minutes. Everything is right there. Listen carefully. Just three minutes. You ready? Go. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Christian from Taiwan along with my colleague Ang Lee and my mentor Jim Roberts. We would love to present a severe season. Hurry up! We don't have time! To conclude my case report, I love minimally invasive approaches and my patient love minimally invasive approaches and who wouldn't? <laughs> you like it? If you like this video, don't worry, you take a photo. This QR code will help you to find this video from AZODO website. Take a photo. And this is the photo that I received this award from chief editor from AZODO. Oh, and along with my mentor, Dr. Robert, we are so happy about this award. And later on, we make a reprint in this journal, Journal of Digital Orthodontics. So you can download this reprint for free. Free. You can download all the Journal of Digital Orthodontics for free. Take a photo of this QR code. From this QR code, all the article, you can get it. Journal of Digital Autonomy, the journal you have to read every day. That way, increase your understanding, increase your ability to fix those difficult cases. And if you want to hear more about the video, the presentation, we have video right here. Good. It's uh, this one, the one I show you. And this is the latest one. We have so many right here. So take a photo, find this QR code, and you will find those videos. We have over 600 videos on the YouTube for free. So what's the cutting edge today? If you ask me what is cutting edge in orthodontic today, my answer to that would be quite straightforward. Digital orthodontic. All things digital. Digital is the way to go. Let me give you one example. What is digital orthodontic? Suppose you have skeletal class three severe crowding like this. And what would you do? And what would be the best way to fix this case? And class three, anterior close by, severe crowding. And let me ask you how long it will take from A to B? How long? How many months? And how many visits to, to go from A to B? You only took me 15 months, 10 visits, no reposition is effort, very few effort to get this result. So how can you do that? Let me give you an example. It's a metaphor. It's a similar. Suppose you want to build a high skyscraper, high tall beauty. So you can build like this way and you find, oh, they have, uh, they are not straight. So I adjust a little bit. And then you build again and you adjust a little bit. And then finally you finish the work. You react with the problem that you made. The second way to build a tall building, you can draw a blueprint and based on the blueprint for future outcome, you build this one, this top building. So that's digital setup. And this digital setup will help you to prevent a lot of problems. It's straightforward, 
right before you put the braces on patient's mouth, you already solve all the problem. Future problem might be encountered. And if I want to build a tall building, I will use this one to build my Taipei 101 in my country. And this Taipei 101 is the tallest building on earth, used to be. And now it's number three or number four. It was located in the capital of Taiwan called Taipei City. So next time when you visit Taiwan, look at this building. It's easy to spot. And find this building, hit to the south. 40 miles, you'll be able to find Christian's office. Okay? Very easy. Find this Taipei 101. My office, Beethoven, is only 40 miles south of Taipei 101. Easy. So this teacher that are insignia. The insignia have three important steps that I would love to share with you. Number one is diagnosis and treatment plan. Of course, every single orthodontic case, you have to spend your time to diagnose what's the problem and how to solve the problem. You come up with the treatment option, treatment plan. And the patient, talk to the patient and decide which plan you want to execute. The patient want to execute. Diagnosis and treatment plan. With the right diagnosis, you come up with a reasonable treatment plan. For this case, we're probably thinking about extraction or down extraction. Remember, we talked about this decision making table, very important. Quiz chance decision making table for extraction and non extraction. And it turned out to be like this straight profile. But very upper incisor, severe crowding, 14 millimeter severe crowding. And patient was okay to take out the teeth. So we decided to take out four by casting. So four by casting was take out like this. And then we went to the digital setup. How to fix this case with four by injection? And there are three key procedures. Number one, you might think about how to stop this mina. And you need to move the mina to the left, two millimeter. And when you set up, you already have that uh, idea in mind. And you also want to plan about how to close the space. When you close the space, obviously, the low tension, you want to retract more because the patient has class three to start with. And finally, when you retract the low tension backward, you need to think about the talk. And initially, the patient has 84 and the standard value, value will be 90 degrees. So in this case, if you are using class three, you will make this low incisor even richer cut, even upright. So what would you do? When you decide you will put more top on the low incisor called over correction. And you, you only just write down and the on call technician will help you to build in this over correction. You don't have to do anything about it. About it. You just tell the patient that my that's friend, my friend, I would have to increase 10th degree dingo root talk, something like that. Like that. So, so the sweet procedure is like a diagnosis and treatment plan is print. like a day time, day time, the ground, the, the base. base. And then once your big, your, your, your base, your ground is solid, then it's easy for this tree to grow. And once they grow, you set up, the digital setup is like a trunk. You have the framework. Finally, it will become effortless execution to get a beautiful result. Because everything already considered and set up in digital, digital setup. 
So you got this one, and you step by step, you have good breaking position, and you just go through the wire sequence and close that space. And at the end, you'll be able to get this result. And I will say it's a simple and very powerful approach. Digital setup will help you to get the result soon and good. That's why it's very simple and very powerful with this digital setup. At the end, you will see this beautiful smile and it's a huge change. In Sydney, help me to treat this case. 15 months, 10 basic, no reposition, one some minor bending, at least. And we get a good result. The patient love it. We publish this case report four years ago, and you can download this journal for free. Every single step can be found in this article. That is the way I love to publish my case. At the end, we will attach the discrepancy index, which is diagnosis, and the evaluation of my treatment result called CRE score for this case. We lost 16 points, which is under 26, is considered excellent result. One more. How about class two, transport? Can I? Oh, very difficult. In class two model, midnight, oh, a lot of problem involved in this case. And just let you understand how difficult to solve transposition in the old days. If you look at the journal, the world class premier journal is AODO, you will find most cases, most situations, they will spend about 40 months, sometimes 46, 45 months. And the technique is so complicated to solve this transport. Can I? Wow. When I look at this picture, I was thinking about, I cannot do it because it's too complicated. I am not smart enough. Average, on average, 40 months. Complicated design, which I cannot duplicate. But if you look at the way we treat this case, it is very simple. It only took me 20 months. There are three key to fix this case. Number one, mechanic to solve transposition. Design the right mechanic to push the canine forward. Do not bump this and auto eruption. Once we push the canine forward, now we can bump second premolar, and I use this button to derotate. And when I hook out this power chain, that also give a force to push this canine further forward. So this will push. And that's the mechanic we did. So the key to transposition treatment is mechanic and the sequence of the treatment. And we have this mechanic, four months in treatment, we put the, the continuous arch wire, six months, eight months, 10 months, almost done. So difficult situation, but the solution is so simple. To every action, there is always opposite and equal reaction, action and reaction. That's Newton's law number three. All the mechanics we use, we need to think about Newton's law, number three, one, two, three, action and reaction. Down below is easy. When I solve this transpose, it's, I get switch. Normally the root position was not right. So I use this top key spring for top control. So the talking spring, I will stay there, keep there for six months. The can has a 
very promising group, and we, I, I really wanted to have Lingo root talk. So the way I did it is I used this talking spring for six months. Finally, IGC school, IGC stands for Infacycromatic Crest School, which I need use school to dislike the whole dentition backward to correct class two. Very powerful. The school is put outside the root. So it's easy to insert and very powerful to get the result like this. Beautiful profile, beautiful smile. And look at the dentition. Transpose, done. Wow. Modern, done. Class one modern. So we saw transposition, crowding, impaction, modern, and midnight oh, in 20 months. Remember, in AJLDO, the average is about 40 months. Bam! We only took 20 months. That's why it's important for you to begin with the end in mind. You design the mechanic, design the treatment sequence in your digital setup, which is insignia in this case. So we use insignia to think about the mechanic. 14 months, uh, 14 visits, zero reposition, only 20 months, effortless execution. You don't have to spend a lot of effort. Once you design, in your computer and the technician will help you to fix that. And we published three years ago in ACO ZTO, and you also can reach in my YouTube. So free download at iZTO.pro. You'll be able to find it. To do things right, first you need a law, then technique. You need to have the patience. I love orthodontics. I love to move the teeth around. That's why every day I, I feel so lucky. I'm so happy. Every day I couldn't wait to wake up to start my day. I love my job. So first, you love, you need the love. Then you learn the technique. Without the passion, we love, without. If you don't have love, you don't have the passion. It's hard for you to learn the technique. But once you have the love, have the passion, it's easy to learn. There are so many ways to learn it. Dental class one, by mesla protrusion, non-crowding. If you are a four, four by attrition, because non-crowding, when you retract, because you apply the force on the crown, which is far away from the center of resistance. Top control is the key. And when you apply, retract this upper incisor, you create a moment. And this moment will upright the central incisor. If the final position like this, uh, I think it's okay, we love it. If the final position is like this to upright, no, we don't like it. Unfortunately, a lot of cases. By mesial protrusion, no crowding, four by attrition. When you retract the incisor, you get upright. Top control. How can you design the top control? So in this case, by mesial protrusion, protrusively. So what we want to focus are how would you design the top? So at the end you'll be able to get a good top control. We start with treatment diagnosis, decision-making table for extraction and non-extraction, protrusive, high angle, frame, non-crowded, non-crowded, non-crowded. If you want to take the teeth out, you need to think about the top. And patient is okay for four by extraction, so we take the teeth out. And we run through this procedure with our insignia setup, 19 months to close this extraction space. And finally, the profile is, up, is good. And look at the incisor position. 19 months in treatment, we go from 
118 to 104. Almost idea. That's exactly what we want. 104. Wow. And look at this huge main mandibular growth. This patient grew a lot. So you also need to take that into consideration. Look at that precise stock control. I love this stock control. And for the custom made bracket, it is easy to build the first order pen and the second order pen. The difficult part to control is third order pen, which is the top control. And if you have insignia set up, that will help you tremendously to set up your talk. For this case, we know we will have a lot of talk loads. So in the insignia setup, you will put 10, 20 lingo root talk over correction. And that will compensate your side effect. And talk is very dynamic. It's dynamic with three ways. Number one, original tooth position. And number two, the amount of the retraction. The more, the more retraction you have, you will lose a lot of talk. And you have to put more lingo root talk. Original position is also important. If the original position is very upright, boy, that could be very difficult. And also the working wire. The wire, the wire size has to be big enough. For me, for the insignia setup, I would love to use 19 by 25 in order to prevent top loss. So original tooth position, amount of rejection, and working wire, they all affect your top control. Remember that. Oh, take a photo, please, my dear friend. This slide is so important to get you understand why insignia is so important. The beauty of insignia is talk control. You need, you can set up the talk. If you are interested about this case, you can find it in this journal four years ago. Free that note. Can you imagine? So next time, I would love to buy a digital daemon, which is in Sydney, with precise talk, precise arch form, and precise location that take care of three major problems in my fixed price. Sometimes it's hard to position the bracket, done. Arch form, done. Most importantly, precise top. If you need to add more top, you can just prescribe. So those are begin with the end in mind. And in other words, it's begin with the end inside. You can actually see it in your computer and tell your technician in California, that's what I wanted to do. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I think it's wonderful to practice like this way. To summarize, the evolution of fixed orthodontic appliance. It all started in 1924 when Dr. Engel invented the edge wise, cutting edge, edge wise. So the edge wise means you have a slot that can accommodate the rectangular wire so they can control the top. Control the top is important. So this angle edge wise back to 1924 is very, very important. It, it, it's the, the, the milestone of fixed price. 1924. Today we still use edge wise. And then very Andrew refined his angle edge wise as a straight one. He put first order band, second order band, and third order band into the bracket, becomes straight wide. You don't, you no longer need to bend the wide as much as used to have. In 1990, Dwight Damon figured out to put a sliding door, which can reduce the friction, friction free, and set the tools free to have a life force mechanic. And later on, Today, we have insignia that put 
the digital setup into this statement to solve the bracket position, arch one, and the top issue. And if you want to put more into your digital set, you can. You just talk to the technician, do whatever you want. So you can increase your precision and reduce your effort in your chair. So with this, the straight wire reduces the bending, the daemon give the tooth movement freedom with light force and arch development. And finally, if you put the digital setup into the daemon system, you got an insignia. So you have a precision, top, arch form, and position, bounding position. And you can also put your personal touch. If you want this inside the more flare out, you can do that. If you are upright, you can do that. You just tell your technician and they will do that for you. That's called personal touch. And remember, all this digital demon is combination of artificial intelligence because it put a lot of doctors experience into this digital setup. And also you add your personal touch. You have your preference, you add it. So it's digital intelligence combined other experience and your personal preference put together. My dear friend, take a photo. This is a very important evolution of fixed also don't be applied. It's considered the cutting edge. That is the fee. If you ask me where is the fee, where is the cutting edge? This is the cutting edge. To conclude my lecture today, conclusion number one. Technology adaptation life cycle. Every time when the new technology comes along, you will see a life cycle like this. First, you have innovator who invent this technology. Of course, they will adapt. Adapt means they will use. They will use that. Dwight Damon invent the Damon brace. Of course, Dwight Damon and his classmate will use the Damon braces. And later on, their friend, their student will follow, called early adopter. Not everybody can be innovator, but everybody can be early adopter. Adopt in the early time and follow with early majority. This is the majority. And then the day majority. The one thing you can do is become a member of Laker. Laker means you always run in day. Everybody was using the new technology. You are still using the technology invent 40 years ago, 30 years ago. It's old fashioned. You don't want to be Decker. Let me give you one example. Innovator, not everyone can be innovator, but everybody can be early adapter. But if you become early adapter, you have a risk. You might have a cousin, cousin being get knowledge get that you have the problem, and nobody can tell you because. Not too many people use this new technique. That's mean the gap, the cousin. So you will get very frustrated. So for me, I am a little bit conservative. I love to join early majority. You enjoy the new technology, but you are sad because a lot of people use it and you can get advice from a lot of friends. But if you are the majority, not still okay, but don't be decker. Let me give you one example. My English teacher called Teacher Paul. He used to use this Nokia. And one day I told my 
I asked my teacher, Paul, why do you use this Nokia? Everybody else use iPhone. Nobody use Nokia. And my teacher brother, I don't need an iPhone. I only need to call my wife. So this Nokia will be good for me. So I don't want a new technology. So I told Dr. Paul, but this Nokia is not smartphone. If it's not smartphone, it is stupid phone. Why would people want to use stupid phone? If you use stupid phone every day, you become stupid. Do you understand? So when I taught my teacher Paul, if you use stupid phone, you will become stupid. And then that night, he changed to iPhone. His wife was so surprised because his wife tried to convince him to change to iPhone. He just simply didn't want. And once I told you, if you use stupid phone, you will become stupid. You always want to use smartphone and become smart. So everybody get a smartphone, which is iPhone. Take a photo, please. So don't be a nigger. Early majority is probably the best way. I love to join the early majority. I don't want a nigger. I want this one. I encourage you to become early majority. When you attend this lecture, you are early majority. For sure. Good. I love it. Conclusion number two. Take time to deliver, to think. But when the time for action has arrived, stop thinking and go in. In other words, take time to study this digital orthodontic. But when the patient comes into your office, stop thinking, just treat the patient. You know, this is the future. Digital orthodontic is the future. Why are you still thinking about it? You should think about earlier. Conclusion number three, the era of digital orthodontic which is artificial intelligence. It is artificial intelligence because they put a lot of experience into this digital setup. Has that right? My dear friend, be a part of it. You don't want to be a Laker. You want an early majority. Please, please be a part of it. With that, my dear friend, if you want to reach me, there are a couple of ways you can reach me. You can go to my Facebook. I have two Facebook. Facebook, number one, Chris Chen. That's my QR code. You can reach me from this QR code. Take a photo, please. Facebook, number two, Chris Chen also. Because I have so many friends, so I, I have to create this Facebook number two. Now you can also reach me in Facebook, okay? Or you love to reach me with Instagram. So you can reach me in Instagram, QR code right here. And with that, my dear friend, I thank you for your attention. I really, really honored and really happy to have a chance to talk to you. I hope this presentation will help you in the journey of you also don't need learning. I see you soon. Thank you. Q &A. Q &A. Oh, so see. you had a couple of questions that were sent to you, if you'd be so kind to answer them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have a kid, 10 years old, missing one six one seven two five two nine, multiple missing. How could we compensate this defect in order to increase the risk, decrease the risk of bone atrophy by the time when they are able to insert implant? The mark 
has the same condition right now. She is undergoing very complex postodontic rehab. Is there an option to use mini school besides using removal play with school? I guess expanding school cement. What would be your strategy in case of inserting mini school? Uh, well, I I normally will wait probably tier sixteen or eighteen because uh, I'm not comfortable to put a school in order to keep the ball. Some people they say if you put a school and have a crucial loading, will maintain the ball. So it will help data out for imprint placement. But I just find it's too complicated. So I would rather give this kid a happy childhood and keep watch that case until age 16 to 18. And start my treatment. So why don't you just send those patient material record to me through my email so I can look at and I give you my personal opinion because it, it will be difficult. Just look at this statement. It will be better that you send me the record. I'd be happy to give you my comment. How did you manage to become great orthodontist? Please give advice how to succeed in our profession. What is the key to success? Well, that's good. What's the key to success? The key is easy. First, you need to find your love. I told you, when I was 27 years old, I find my love, also don't think. I find my beloved mentor, which is Charlie Burstow. I decide, I want to learn from Charlie Burstow. I read all the articles Charlie Burstow has published. I know Charlie Burstow material very well. And then, every time I have a chance to listen to Charlie Burstow in the United States, I will go there and listen. And finally, I become a student, and I learn from the best. And that might be a good key to success. Number one, find your love. What you love? My love is also daunting. I assume you love also daunting too. Number two, find the mentor. The mentor is very important. Everybody need a teacher. Everybody need a mentor. And when you find a mentor, stick to that mentor. Try to stand on the shoulder of the giant. You can look further. If you don't have the mentor, it's hard for you to learn because the mentor will save you a many years of frustration. So you have love, you find your mentor. The last one is dedication to your profession. Stick to your profession and discipline. Learn every single day. Every single day, remind yourself that you needed to learn. Look at you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. You needed to study a lot. So, three key. Find a lot. Find a mentor, stick to that mentor, and you need a discipline to learn every single day. With that, 10 years later, 20 years later, you will become successful. And you enjoy every single day and every moment. I, I, my dear friend, I really enjoy my life every day because I love my profession. Also, don't think it's the best profession I can find. If not also don't think what profession you would choose. 
Okay, good. If I didn't do orthodontics, I would love to become artist and go back to orthodontics. Orthodontics is artist and scientist. That's why orthodontics is the perfect profession for me. You need a logic to think about the, the situation. That's a science. I want to become a scientist. And you need to have the technique to fix the case, to execute it. And finally, you need to have artistic appreciation to look at the case. Oh, this is good. That is a good profile. This is a good smile. That is artist. So I love also don't it? And if I cannot do also, that, I want to become artist. I want to make a painting and do my garden. I have a beautiful garden. I will show you my garden later. When you visit Taiwan, I show you my garden. Gardening, garden, put a plant and flower. It's art. And that was set your soul. Every time I was in my garden, doing my gardening, I feel happy. I think in my also the only case, put a flower. And that's it. Sweet question. Good. I love it. So any more questions, let me know through the email. I'll be happy to answer all the questions you have. I'm really happy I have a chance to talk to you. I think it's a, it's a privilege that person like me can touch anyone. I hope my material help you in your also don't With that, Thank you. I see you soon.